Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I know I said I'd be back last night with more content surrounding the Setmata situation, however, sometimes things happen, like a transmission completely burning out, and we must all change and adapt. So, I will obviously be recording that video for you right now. I've already put out a couple of videos discussing this topic, so I don't want to waste everyone's time with a needless recap. I have no desire to pull a Yong Ya and artificially pad out the time to over 10 minutes by wasting everyone's time. If this video happens to be more than 10 minutes in length organically, then so be it. But I want to make sure that it's that long because it needs to be, not because I want to run a post-roll ad. That said, if you're not caught up on the story, if you want a refresher, links to the previous videos will be in the description below, and I'll throw a card up to the previous video in the upper right corner of your screen. And as for any information included in this video, links to anything publicly available will be in the description down below. So, a lot more has been happening on the front of Submoto and 2K games, including Inside Gaming continuing to be themselves, I suppose. Since the previous video, a plethora of videos on Submato's channel have been stricken. He did have a habit of posting his videos in the community section of his channel in order to combat the hilariously bad notification system on YouTube, and from that community section, we are able to see that there are a total of 29 videos currently not viewable. Now, in regards to that, Legacy Killer HD had received information that a total of 63 videos had been hit with DMCA takedowns, and Submato's channel would be terminated in seven days. We also, as I said, saw a video from Inside Gaming that, in my opinion, wasn't exactly the greatest in the world. In that video, several claims were made, but no real verifiable evidence was provided, but they did garner some additional information that bears considering. Now, in their video, Inside Gaming stated that a 2K representative had informed them that 2K was, quote, very close to legal proceedings, which directly contravenes the impression IGN got from a 2K representative that they were not pursuing legal action. Of course, minds do change, as more information comes in, so whether they will or will not remains to be seen. Their video also discussed the private channel on Submoto's Discord server where people who join the $5 per month YouTube membership would gain access to that channel. That channel supposedly allowed people access to additional leaks and information, and here we have conflicting reports yet again where other YouTubers like Upper Echelon Gaming, at least I'm pretty sure it was him, I've watched a ton of other people's content on this situation this week, so if I somehow made a mistake there, I apologize. Regardless, it was stated that a member of that private Discord confirmed that no additional leaked information was posted in that channel. However, and again without a shred of verification, Inside Gaming claimed they were provided with screenshots of that Discord server that disclosed the additional leaks were taking place. Now bear in mind, no screenshots have been shown to the public and no verification as to whether that information was already out in the wild or not has been done, which lands us in a very clear-cut case of he said, she said. Now, to be clear, Directly charging for access to leaked information is against the law, as it would mean Tupmato would be directly profiting off of someone else's copyright without any form of fair use defense, as screenshots themselves are not fair use. It would be like going into an art museum and taking a picture of the Mona Lisa and then charging for prints. That is a violation of copyright, and similar law would apply here. And I do have something to say about that, but I'll save it for after the information run-through. Now, Inside Gaming also sought out an attorney for his take on the Twitch stream thumbnail issue in which he stated, quote, It obviously depends on the facts. If Submoto actually did exploit Twitch's security to access and subsequently copy and reproduce the Borderlands material, that would be a crime under California Penal Code Section 502C which California 502C is the penal code that surrounds unauthorized computer access and fraud. And all of this hinges on whether or not he exploited Twitch's systems. Now, exploiting computer terminology is defined as the following. A computer exploit or exploit is an attack on a computer system, especially one that takes advantage of a particular vulnerability the system offers to intruders. Used as a verb, exploit refers to the act of successfully making such an attack. And the terminology there still involves some form of intrusion or penetration, where in this case, no such intrusion has occurred. Now, it's been learned that this was a bug that involved the mobile version of the Twitch app and not the browser-based version, and viewing the private thumbnails was only possible via that mobile app, and Twitch has since patched the bug. And also, within Inside Gaming's video, they paint Submoto as a person who has violated the law in which they state the following. Yeah, but it gets real bad when an individual intentionally circumvents or bypasses active security to obtain that information. Like using an exploit in a specific version of a service to view private information. And those streams are obviously private because you have to do such a workaround to see them. 
Now, there was a lot of hoop jumping there by stating only within a specific version, which implies the vulnerability had been patched and Submodo deliberately maintained a previous version of the app to be able to take advantage of the bug, which, mind you, it was a bug, not a security breach. Okay, actually clear delineator of message here. Those are the facts as we're currently aware of them, and anything from this point on is my own opinion. Just so we're clear, I don't want my opinion taken as stated fact. There's been no indication whatsoever from anyone on either side that Submodo maintained a specific version of the Twitch app in order to take advantage of a bug, which was likely completely unreported on up until now in order to view the thumbnails. And it is important to make the distinction that what was viewable was just the thumbnails. It is the equivalent of going to a website and seeing a picture. No intrusion took place. There was no security breach. These screenshots were literally being broadcast by Twitch. As there was no intrusion, I would put it to people in my non lawyery trained brain that no exploit occurred and thusly no violation of California 502C took place. Although, I could very well be misinterpreting it as well. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. We also have no idea how the question was phrased to the attorney in Inside Gaming's video. Context and questions like that are important, and likely this is the sort of thing where no definitive decision on whether it was an intrusion or not can be made without a judge's ruling. Now, others like Layman Gaming really don't enjoy their content, but they had a theoretical question they were unable to answer in which they asked why 2K were doing this to Submoto and not to say Legacy Gaming and The No, who also leaked a great deal of content and yet none of their videos were hit with DMCA takedowns. Well, the answer is simple. Everyone's saying it. Leaks happen. And in the industry, most of the time, they just have to grin and bear it because journalists and content creators reporting on a leak are violating no law. Granted, the employee leaking the information is likely violating some form of NDA, and if they're ever found out, would likely be blacklisted within the industry, but the journalists and YouTubers are protected under fair use, as it is news and or critical commentary. Again, that is not an absolute defense, but it is a strong defense, and in the case of leaks, it is virtually a guarantee that any lawsuit under normal conditions would see the journalist or YouTuber in question victorious, and as those lawsuits are lengthy and expensive, it would be a bad monetary gamble on the part of the game's publisher. However, Submoto's case was different in that they had at least a possibility that he was violating copyright by posting leaked information in a private channel in his Discord in exchange for a monetary benefit. That goes back to the picture of a work of art. If true, he would be violating their copyright. And again, I have extreme doubts as to the validity in this, but regardless of my own misgivings on this, if there's a potential that Submoto was violating the law with the Twitch thumbnails, then that would most definitely provide a very clear second avenue that 2K and Take 2 would very much wish to quash. After all, leaked information is one thing, violating the law is something else. But Layman Gaming, true to their name, couldn't figure out why 2K and Take 2 would go after Submoto and not the No. And the reason should be plainly obvious, although maybe not to a layman. The reason is because these are different cases. And while behind-the-scenes information on one side points to no illegal actions taking place, we have equal claims on the other side of the aisle as to the contrary. And yes, 2K have DMCA'd a metric ton of Submoto's videos. Now, the reason why is one of two scenarios. The first is that they have him over a barrel legally, and they do have their own evidence that shows what Submoto was doing was illegal, in which case they went through and filed DMCAs on every video that was violating their copyright or were discussing material that was obtained through what they deemed to be illegal means. Now, I have a real problem with this, because any party will always take the interpretation of legality that will most favor their side of the argument, and there is a real possibility that they could be wrong, and if that is the case, they could be violating the DMCA in the doing. Of course, they'll likely get away with any such action just by virtue of the fact that lawsuits are extremely expensive and Submoto himself might be on shaky ground in terms of legality. The second scenario is that 2K and Take-2 have preemptively taken down a wide swath of his videos to inspect and then later release. If that is the case, then that would also be a violation of the DMCA, and they'll likely get away with it yet again because, let's face it, lawsuits are expensive. Of course, there's the super secret third option that all of those videos actually were infringing copyrights, but as some of those videos were merely him talking into a camera, I find this super secret third option to be highly suspect, and it's infinitely more likely that what is happening is one or the other former options. 
Regardless, we have a great deal of speculation and contradictory information now surrounding this topic, and as such, I think it's important to try and keep things straight. None of us have any idea what will happen as a result of these DMCA strikes. If all of the videos were stricken in a single DMCA takedown request, then his channel would have a total of two strikes. Remember, he had one remaining from the initial seven videos that were taken down, as only six of them were released. And if so, there is a possibility, however slight, that his channel won't vanish into the wind in five days' time. But that is a remote possibility, and I think it likely that, right or wrong, 2K and Take-Two will get their way here. And, well, would you look at that? I managed to hit the 10-minute mark without needing to resort to a bunch of needless filler. I guess I had, could ramble on longer than I thought I could. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.